thinking sideways. I don't understand. Does not compute. You never know. Insufficient data to formulate on the What? Stories of things we simply don't know the answer to. Hello there. Welcome to Thinking Sideways, the hard-hitting podcast that finds out stuff that nobody else can figure out. I'm Joe, joined by... Oh, Devin. Steve. Sorry, we went the opposite way. Yeah, yeah, we got to mix it up sometimes. Ah. Yeah, we don't want people to think there's some particular order. I also realized that I literally cannot do the intros. <laughs> Every single episode we have from the last like month and a half, I'm just like, Devin, I don't know what we're doing anymore. Who, who are we talking What's to? What's going on? Where am I? What's the name of our podcast? I don't know. Yeah. This week, we're solving yet another mystery. And this is a... Fairly well-known one, but not as well-known as some of the really well-known ones. I didn't you know, know like, about it. You didn't know about no. it? No. Did you know about it? Uh, no. 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 See? I, I, I had no idea how I found out about it, to tell you the it's truth. German. I I, you know everything German. Yeah, I don't remember. But uh, anyway, so somehow we got wind of this, and it's kind of mysterious, and so we thought we'd solve it. Just so, you know, uh, all the next of kin can like move on with their lives. <laughs> So, yeah, and so, yes, this does unfortunately involve somebody's di- somebody dying. A lot of our mysteries seem to involve people dying. Have you noticed that? Yeah. I yeah. have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is why I'm, I'm going to non-death stories mm-hmm. yeah. for a while. That's right. You're going to positive, uplifting, you know, kind yes. of fuzzy, warm. Kittens and bunnies. Yeah. So that's, uh, you, you know, you go with that. I'm going to stick with death. So uh, this, is a, this is a case that's called Yogsi Fall. And let me spell that out, Y-O-G... Apostrophe T Z E. Yahtzee! Yahtzee, exactly. I know. It <laughs> kind of reminds you of that. Yeah. So, anyway, this happened back in 1984 in Germany. Uh, there's a guy named Gunther Stoll who had a case of paranoia. A big old case of paranoia. Yeah, kind of. So, uh, prior to his death, he would speak to his wife about them. And he talked about them, meaning people who tended to kill him. Uh, oh, and, that them. Yeah, that them. He never said who exactly they were, but. Yeah, there were apparently people out to get him. And what? Okay, and what was his profession again? Uh, he worked in the food industry. He was like a food technician or and some sort of technician. Was he working at the time? Of no, he was unemployed at the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, probably. You know, and actually, seriously, if there are people out to get you, do you want to be working in any sort of factory where they could shove you into the machinery? No. Yeah, I know. Seriously, Definitely Burger. Not. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm better to get a job at a Seven Eleven, like the night the graveyard shift. Yeah. Which is a lot safer. Soylent Green is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, uh, I, and I, I'm not sure. Nobody's ever actually interviewed his wife to find out how exactly hard it was to live with this guy. You know, he's always raving on about them. But maybe there really were people out to get him, because actually in the end he did die. So Kind of mysteriously, right? Yeah, kind of, a little bit mysteriously, yeah. On October 25th, 1984, around 11 p.m., he was at home with his wife, and he mentioned them again, and then suddenly shouts, Jetzt geht mir ein Licht auf! Well, means, yes, oh, of course, yes, yeah. Which means, now I've got it, in German, of course. So, and then he writes down six letters on a piece of paper, and the letters are, again, Y-O-G, apostrophe, T-Z-E, Yogsi. And also, it's, it's noted that the, the third letter, the G, could also be a six. So there's a little bit of ambiguity there. So he's got a little bit of sloppy handwriting, yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so they think that the connection could be the... the uh, horizontal bar on the G could have been meant to connect to yeah. to make a six instead of just floating there. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. It was uh, a little weird when I read that at first. I was just trying to make sure. Some I... people make their G's kind of the same way they make their their sixes. They just like do a little down thing. Because I'm guessing he wrote this all in capitals. Uh, yeah. Apparently. Because that's the only way the G would become a six mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is if it was a capital G. But you know, somebody makes a G, a six like this, or they make a G like that. Mm-hmm. Right? I know that our listeners can't what, what see Devin, what I'm What Devin doing. is drawing is you start at the top, you draw to the left and down in an arc, and then you come up to the mid Which on is the, the only way right. I've ever seen so anybody write a kind six. kind of a J uh-huh. shape, yeah. and then you're saying they go to the left a little, back to the right, and then down uh-huh. to so add some that people horizontal do bar. Those kind of G or like a six. Mm. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. So anyway, who knows? Probably a license plate number. <laughs> yeah. It does kind of look like that, yeah. Yeah, it's uh so it's it's 
Nobody knows what it means. Uh, apparently, right after he wrote them down, he crossed them out. So he didn't have it. Or he did, but he wanted to make sure that nobody else could have it. So they wouldn't know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. He might have been working on some sort of word puzzle, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So, yog I don't know. Uh, so nobody's ever been able to decipher that, the meaning of these particular words. Uh, so anyway, right after that, he left the house and went to a pub in Wilnsdorf. Apparently, it was his favorite drinking hole. And he uh, ordered a beer, and then he fell off his bar stool backwards and, and hit his head. Uh, according to witnesses there, he lost consciousness briefly, and they also said that he wasn't drunk. Well, that was apparently his first beer of the night. That apparently he didn't get to drink because he left right after that, too. And, and he, was, he was unconscious for a couple of moments? Yeah, yeah he lost consciousness, apparently. So, and then they let him get in his car and drive away. Yeah, I know. Okay. Uh, Wait, yeah. well, yeah. I'm, I'm just trying, to, I'm just trying to, to place this in my head. And I've seen people fall off chairs or fall off stools before. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to think, well, did he, did he just pitch backwards and fall flat to the floor? Or did he hit a table or a chair on his way down? We don't mm-hmm. know that, I'm yeah, guessing. The, the accounts are sketchy. Yeah. I mean, he could have, he could have fallen backwards. I mean, it was a bar full of people drinking. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he could have fallen straight over backwards or sorted to the sides and smacked his face or in against the table or God knows what. But well, I was just all... thinking that falling Falling flat, you're not going to hit your head as hard as if you hit a table or chair on the way down. If you think yeah. about it, your body takes the inertia and then your head bounces off the ground if yeah. you fall flat. But if you fall and hit something on the way down, all that inertia is at that contact point. Oh, unless, yeah. unless, oh yeah, it's going to hurt. Unless yeah. the reason he fell was because he became unconscious. Oh, I hadn't right? thought if about he that. he lost consciousness prior and fell backwards because his body just went limp. I, okay, uh-huh, no, that's, 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 a, yeah. that's a great idea because I was just presuming that he was stone cold sober and sitting up and for some reason lost his balance. But if he's, oh, wow, no, that, I hadn't. I okay. cracked the case, you guys. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. cracked it wide open. I'm, yeah. I'm right. suddenly interested in this story. Let's keep going. <laughs> okay, well, uh, follow, us on, uh, follow us on Facebook. I'm like <laughs> uh, oh, just kidding. Uh, all right, so let's continue with the story here. So um, after he after he recovered his senses, he woke up, he left the pub, apparently didn't drink his beer, uh, and drove away in his Volkswagen. And he showed up a few hours later in his childhood neighborhood, which is called um, Scott uh, Heigerzielbach, I think. Heigerzielbach. And um, do we know like where that was in relation to this bar that he was at? Like if it was hours away or if he just disappeared for hours and it was... Uh, about 15 minutes. Oh, uh, so he was gone for a while. He was gone for a couple he hours. He was, like, missing yeah. for a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. well, maybe he went to other bars and fell off his bar. <laughs> <too. laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, and it might have been, too. I mean, so he shows up uh, in, in this, in, at this woman's house in his childhood neighborhood, uh, as I said, of the unpronounceable name. And uh, he went to this house of this woman that he'd known from his childhood, who by this time was a fairly elderly person. But you don't know. I mean, she might have been the only one that came forward. Maybe you spent that whole two hours knocking on doors and yeah. other houses in the neighborhood. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's yeah. a weird, unaccounted time. Yeah, but... It's a couple of hours that he disappears. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if he's just clocked his head... Yeah, I mean, who knows? For all we know, he could have just been driving around lost. And if, I'm sorry, yeah. I should have asked this question earlier, too. Do we know how old he was? You know, um, I I found no record of exactly how old he was. I had the impression that he was, like, in his mid-30s. Okay, yeah, I was just, um, you know, again, like a 70-year-old guy passes out versus, like, a middle-aged dude passes out. mm -hmm. It's just a difference in my brain. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't be sorry. Ask all those questions. I'm gonna. Yeah, so anyway, we don't know what happened, uh, what he was doing. He might have gone to other pubs um, and hung out. I mean, maybe he went and saw a movie. But he goes to see this woman. Right. He shows up at 1 a.m. at this this old lady's doorstep. Uh, he'd known her since he was a kid and uh, wanted to talk to her, but she wouldn't let him in because of the late hour. And so she Makes basically sense. convinced him to go home to his wife. Mm-hmm. She probably thought he was drunk at 1 o'clock in the yeah, morning, yeah. Just randomly showing up at well, the house. Well, it is a little random. It's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you feel a little, you know. A little weird. A little, a little well, edgy. Yeah. It's yeah. A, little, be a little weird, creepy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, before he left, he, he said that he told her that a horrible incident was going to have was going to take place sometime soon. Oh, didn't say what. Ominous. I know. A couple hours go by, a couple more missing hours. We don't know where the hell he was. He shows up this time. He's about a hundred kilometers from his last location. Um, two truck drivers were driving down the autobahn. They discover a Volkswagen Golf crashed in the ditch uh, next to the autobahn. 
And both of them testified to having seen a person in a lightly colored jacket walking near the car. Independently of each other, right? Yeah. On their own. They yeah. weren't questioned together? Uh, this I don't know. All I heard is they were tes- that they testified. Oh, I thought this. I read that it was independent accounts. Both of them were, said, yeah, no, I saw somebody in a light colored jacket. And the other person said, oh, yeah, no, I saw somebody in a, a oh. light person, a colored jacket. Oh, okay. No, that no, was a you, coherent sentence. Yeah, that no, no, was totally <laughs> coherent. No, um, yeah, you might be right. I don't, I don't remember that. But you know, I, I, you know, when we were researching these things, we wind up reading a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, and that's sometimes true. It, yeah, I thought it was independently stuff. of each other, which is, of, of course, lends more that's, credence. Yeah, well, it definitely does. Yeah, so anyway, they see this person in a, in a lightly colored jacket. They, they run to the nearest, uh, they have, you know, those emergency phones. By on the, the highway. Autobahn, on the highway, whatever. In the 80s. Yeah, in the 80s, Before obviously. I was born. Yeah, obviously, they're not too necessary now, but they run to that. They call law enforcement, and then they go to the car, and there they find Gunther Stoll naked in the passenger seat of his car. Oh. Yeah, he was barely conscious. He said that there had been four guys in, with him in the car, and those guys had, quote, beat him loose, unquote. I'm not Wait, sure what, is, what that means. I, I, guess, I believe that probably means they beat the holy <laughs> out of him. Yeah, sounds like. Mm. That's, that's the only way I can interpret that phrase. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. And so another, other, but I've, I've read other accounts, too, that say that he didn't say that. He just said that there were four guys, and then they had all taken off. You know, there's two, there's two versions of that. Uh, the, the, oh, the, beat him loose and shook him loose and left him behind? Yeah, they just take that a, could yeah, be another so interpretation be, of beat him loose is, yeah. you know, they shook him loose and, and yeah. ran away without him. Could be, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to trying to understand what this phrase could mean. I guess it, it could also just be, like, weird translation, right? Could be weird translation. I mean, you know, German yeah. to English is kind of a weird... And that that was my... I, I just got to say this. I know this is a little late in the episode to say this, but that was probably the hardest part about reading this or researching this is that the majority of the articles in, are in German, and uh-huh. so when you're reading them translated, they don't come through exceptionally well, well every time. Nah. So it makes it, you, you question what you're reading, not for the validity of it, but for the correct word usage in it. Oh, yeah. yeah well, no, I... and it's just hard. I mean, you know, English is kind of a complicated language, mm-hmm. as some of us know. So, you know, people who are not native speakers or translation software often use words in a kind of weird way that we wouldn't recognize for yeah mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah it's every, totally every yeah every language has a lot of euphemisms mm-hmm. and, we, and we use them all the time without even realizing that, that literally what we're saying doesn't make sense literally we I use mean, say, them literally all the time i mean like beat the bush you know i'm gonna, yeah. you know, I'm gonna beat the bush looking for my cat you know mm-hmm. it's like what the hell does that mean you know, it's like it's, it makes no <laughs> what sense did the bush do to your cat <laughs> yeah 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 and yeah so, so beat him loose could mean uh, there's a number of ways that could go mm-hmm. yeah just yeah. From this, the way it's written, yeah. Let alone what it could have actually been, yeah. Yeah, and of course, you know, again, this is like you know, been all over the internet. It's been told, retold, cut and pasted, and distorted, and so who knows? But there were four guys. Uh, the drivers asked Gunther if those men were her were his friends, and he said no. And the ambulance showed up, carted him away, but he died in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. Mm. Yeah. So, so course, he was pretty severely injured. Oh yeah, yeah, he yeah. was. And it, it turns out, guess how he got injured. He got a run, beating. He got run over by a car. Wait, what? Yeah, he was run over by a car. He wasn't in a car accident. He yeah. was run over by a car? Yeah, he was run over by a car. So the police, uh, they investigated, and the forensic examination of his body showed that he had been run over by a car or a truck or something. He'd, but he'd been actually run over or hit by a car. Wow. And he was injured. They concluded he'd been injured before the crash. They hypothesized, because I don't know exactly how they could have known this for a certainty, but they hypothesized he must have been run down elsewhere and then put back in his car in the passenger seat, and then somebody drove him to that location. I guess you could so, you could know by the what his injuries were. I mean, you know, yeah. there are injuries you get by being in the passenger seat of a car when it mm. is in a crash. Mm. With versus, or without a seatbelt, certain things are going to happen. Yeah, versus, like, getting hit by a car. There are other injuries. And oh, yeah. then, you know, the th- you know, other things like... If you can, you can tell if somebody's got a broken bone and they've been moved Mm. since that, you know, if that bone broke that way and that's fine or that broke that way and then they've moved that person a bunch of times, you know, Mm -hmm. the way that blood settles, things like that. There's lots of things. So, you know, I, I believe them that they, you know, that he got hit 
and was then put in And then put car. in the car. He, he got hit. He got but run over and then put in the car. That's yeah. weird. And then the car was crashed in a ditch, right? Yeah, the car was crashed in the ditch. Okay. Next to the Autobahn. So, yeah, that's that's kind of mysterious. And then there was a part that I mentioned that he was naked when they found him. Oh. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah this, this is the odd bit. Yeah, and yeah. Did, Okay. So he was naked. They concluded that he was naked when he got run over by the car. Oh. Yeah. So he wasn't stripped naked afterwards for, like, evidence reasons. Yeah. He was naked before. He was enjoying the yeah. night air. Yeah, he was going on a little frolic, apparently. And it was it was October? Yeah. In yeah, Germany? late October. Late <laughs> yeah. October. I know, I know. Okay. Yeah. Um. So... Well, you know, it's it's kind of weird, but uh, maybe he liked driving around naked. Who knows? There are folks that do that. Yeah. I guess that's probably true. Yeah, so uh, as far as the police investigation went, they they didn't really turn up much else. Uh, so they, they managed to find some drivers who had been going down that particular stretch of the Autobahn around that time of night, and a few of them apparently reported seeing a hitchhiker pretty close to that spot where he was found. Uh, before or it. after the crash, they don't know. Yeah, they, they, it's like, you know, it could have been they, after. They don't know. It could have been after, it could have been mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they saw a hitchhiker hanging out down there. But the hitchhiker and the guy in the light jacket were never identified. And so it's a, one of them cold cases, which, you know, the world is called upon Team Sideways to solve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Team Sideways. Yeah, so you guys have any theories? Oh, man. There's so many weird things in this. <clears throat> Dude, well, go, go ahead and run. I, I have a couple of possible thoughts on this, but let, let's hear what you've got. I mean, it, it kind of feels like he was suffering a psychotic break of some kind. No, well, could right? be. Right? You know, could it was kind of an extended psychotic break, mm-hmm. but perhaps he lost consciousness and suffered a concussion when he, you know, fell over backwards. He was uh-huh. already in a paranoid kind of state. He drove around. He's got these lost hours. But, you know, it's totally possible that, I don't know, I guess in my world, in like TV land, right, the way that this went down is he was suffering the psychotic break. He went to see his old friend. He said something horrible is going to happen. He started to drive home, pulled over and was like, no, I can't drive home for whatever reason, stripped naked, was walking down the highway, maybe got hit by a drunk driver Mm -hmm. or, you know, a group of kids or whatever. So they were like, oh, crap, we got to get him someplace. They load him into his car, Mm -hmm. start driving him, but they're drunk. So they run off the road again and then bail because why would you stick around for that? Uh You know, but uh, there are just so many different they, you know, on the other hand, like maybe the men in black came to assassinate him or whatever Germany's. Yeah, maybe they really did. The equivalent I don't know. of that is, you know, he he did a little premonition that something awful was going to happen. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was to him or elsewise. Well, yeah. but that's also kind but, of a uh, self fulfilling prophecy. Oh, absolutely, it is. Yeah. Yeah, when you, you say expect something something's gonna bad going to happen, you start making bad decisions. Yeah, uh-huh. like walking naked down the Autobahn. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's an interesting choice to make. Yeah, he uh, and and by the way, if you're gonna if you're gonna murder a guy and fake a fake sort of a car accident, then stripping him naked and putting him in the passenger seat doesn't strike me as a very effective way to do it. So no, I, I but if you like had your DNA mm-hmm. all over his clothes, I mean, but the mm-hmm. thing that I don't know how they determined that he was naked when he got hit. Uh, they probably found skid marks on his skin. I don't know. I feel tire like, marks. Yeah. Actually, a, yeah, car tires make pretty definitive marks on on the human body. I mean, that's a yeah. lot of weight to roll. Although over. I yeah. guess it just seems like that's the sort of thing that can happen through clothes just as easily as it can on skin. Oh yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. You know, so I don't know how they could determine that it was you know naked versus not. But fine. Yeah, but like, why do you? How do you convince a man to strip? Naked? Do you say? Well, oh, if you're a hot chick, it's pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> so here's here's my question. I nowhere in any of the reading did I come across anything that said if they checked his blood alcohol. Mm-hmm. Did you? Yeah. Did either of you I see found, that? I found mm-hmm. zip about that. Okay, yeah. so the way I'm looking at this. He fell off his bar stool and he clocked his noggin somehow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he's in an altered state and he disappears for a couple of hours and then he shows up to this lady's house and then he mm-hmm. disappears for a couple hours later till they find him. I have known people who have banged their head and then decided in an altered state that they need to go get a drink and then of course they do some 
weird stuff because they're not in a rational frame of mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I could just see this guy kind of loopy going to a different place and getting another beer. Yeah. And getting pretty toasted and then going to see this lady. I She doesn't say if he seemed to... Uh, intoxicated or not from the accounts that I no mention of this. Okay, so let's just say that he was a little buzzed. Mm -hmm. He sees her. Oh, okay, I gotta get out of here. Where should I go? Oh, well, I'll I'll go to this place down the street. And he gets another couple beers. He meets a couple of guys. They're all having a good time. Closing time comes around. They've gotta go. And he's like, oh, I've got a car. Don't worry about it. And they're goofing around and Let's say that he's like, oh, you know, it'd be hilarious is if I did this and I'm just going to strip my clothes streaking. off. Yeah, yeah. I know. And then, you know, gets hit by a car. And then we fall back in line with what Devin was saying is that he gets hit by the car. They're like, oh, uh, crap. We got to get this guy to the hospital. Put him in the car. Guy who's driving is a little loaded. Wrecks the car. And they all go, um, not being here. Yeah. Uh, not it. I'm out of here. You tell. Uh, uh, and the yeah. guy who's in the light jacket wandering around, he's the last one left, the guilty party who has to explain what's happening, mm-hmm. and then he chickens out mm-hmm. and beats feet. Yeah. I guess, you know, the other thing I could see happening, which I think I read a, a theory of in the reading somewhere, is that Stroll... Stroll? Stroll. Stroll crashes his car. Mm-hmm. And in this altered state of mind, is like, wow... I got to take all my clothes off for whatever reason. Yeah. Wanders out to the Audubon, gets hit by a Checking car, himself for injuries or something. You know, says, okay, and is like going out there for help, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ch- ch- you know, tries to flag a car down. He's drunk or concussed or whatever. You know, gets hit Altered by a car. State. It's cold. He says, hey, take me back to my car. And they're like, okay, we'll take you back to your car and we'll go call somebody. Uh, yeah, That's right. the light color jacket wait, wait, guy that. takes him back to his car. The only problem I have with that is they don't mention if they found his clothes or not. Mm, yeah, I don't, they yeah, would have again, been around uh, there. Again, the uh, it'd be nice to see the original police file. Yeah. How many times have I said that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another another theory is that the hitchhiker and the mystery guy in the light colored jacket are the same person. That's, mm-hmm. that's actually my theory. So maybe he was out there hitchhiking and he sees Gunther come speeding down the autobahn and then wreck his car, dump it into the ditch, and, mm-hmm. and he goes over there to um, to help out. And before he actually gets to the car, Stoll exits the car, either naked or he's clothed in any strips, runs to the Autobahn to get help, to fly, get to fly down a car, mm-hmm. and gets run over. The hitchhiker at this point goes over to Stoll and says, oh my God, what can I do to help you? And Stoll, who's laying on the freezing cold ground because it's late October and he's naked, yeah. says, could you please like put me in my car so I'm not freezing, yeah. so I'm not sticking to the ground. Oh, I, guess <laughs> the, I mean, and I then, guess the other thing, right, is that, like, so at this point, I know in Chicago or in Illinois, they still have the, like, emergency phones. Mm-hmm. And I think in Southern Oregon, they still do. A lot of more places rural still have places, them. they do. They're every, what, like... Five feet. Five miles or something yeah, like something that, right? Like that. So, like, if he were right in the middle, this dude in the light-colored jacket could have been, you know, going back to the one that was more south and mm. the truck drivers went to the north one and he just was like, all right, well, there's, there's truck drivers over there. They'll, they'll take care of it. I might be implicated for whatever reason. I might have a criminal history. Yeah, something. this guy maybe didn't want to have a conversation with the police. Yeah, you know? so I'm for just going to leave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so I guess I, I can see that, but mm, gosh. Yeah, so that's, that's a possibility. Maybe he stole his clothes at the same time. Maybe he was, you know. Yeah, like maybe the light colored jacket was Gunter's. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, maybe. I guess it's also possible. The other thing I was thinking is that it, this is the 80s, and this woman was an older woman that he went to visit, right? Uh-huh. Maybe she was ashamed to mention that he was coming on to her. Mm-hmm. Maybe he was. Maybe he was naked when he showed up at her house. Uh, I you, mean, maybe. You would uh, think she would have mentioned something like you that. You would yeah. think that. But, okay, so if she's an older lady, right, and it's the 80s, so she would have been, you know, growing up in like a another time. More conservative know. time. Yeah, and if she'd known uh-huh. him growing up, she wouldn't necessarily want to harm his reputation. Oh, uh, that's possible. She could yeah. have said... That's possible she'd be covering for him. I can you know, see that. I didn't let him in the house. Why didn't you let him in the house? Like, you knew him growing up, and he was clearly in distress. Why didn't you let him in the house? Oh, because he was naked? Oh, okay, that makes more sense. But do mm. you say that to somebody, or do you say, oh, it was late, so I didn't let him in the house, mm. and I told him to just go home to his wife? Okay, let's let's stop for a second. Yeah. We've all known someone that we were 
interested in dating or having some kind of relationship with and you go to their door and you're going to knock on their door and it's utterly nerve wracking when they're not expecting you. Mm hmm. Now take your clothes off. Okay, but... Could you imagine yeah. how awkward and weird that but would be for him and her? if you're drunk and you have a concussion and this woman was like your 18-year-old babysitter when you were like eight... And it's your crush. Right? Mm. And she was your crush from forever. This, you regressed your for Your adult reason. brain, this is how you show it. You do the naked man... That works naked every time. Yeah, yeah, it works every time. Yeah. Wait, what? No, it works, it works three out of four times. What is the naked man? It's a TV show reference. It's fine. We'll talk about it later, Steve. Okay. okay. I will teach you about the naked man. Oh, uh, yeah. Gotta hear about the naked man. Yeah. That reminds me of a... I had this idea for a superhero. It's called Naked Man. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Now he shows up at the crime scene and he goes to close with the criminal, you know, like like Batman would. And the criminal just like drops the money and says, no, no, dude, no, it's okay. I'll, I'll go peacefully. <laughs> The naked man. Yeah, naked man. <laughs> no, no. Oh, no, no, stay back, stay back. I, I give up. I give up. No, it's okay. I quit. Nope. Yeah. I quit. I did it. I did it. Okay, yeah. Boy, we are so off track. Yeah, we yeah really this is are. really off track. All yeah. right, so that. that well, okay, so anyway, yeah, that, so that, that sums up my theories anyway. So the hitchhiker puts him in the car, and then the tr truckers show up, and, and the hitchhiker, who doesn't want to talk to the police, figures, well, my job's done. I'm going to beat feet out of here. Mm -hmm. So it could all be... It There's another not... euphemism. Beat feet. Yeah, beat yeah. feet. Yeah. Exactly. Once again, we've dropped so many in this episode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, a, when I... this gets translated to German, it is going to be so unintelligible. <laughs> I know. I know. We're going to frustrate a lot of German speakers. Yeah. It's great. I have a friend who's a linguistics major, and she very free... She works in the business world, and she just texts me almost daily about, like, really? Like, we're using the term ramp up? To talk about this, you know, like all the euphemisms that happen uh -huh. in the business world, but also just like in English in general. Oh, yeah. You know, she's fluent in like five different languages and, you know, English is the one that does it the most. Mm. We use these weird terms for stuff that's just like, I don't know, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you aren't native. It's, no, it's fine. But it's not even yeah. if you're not native, right? It's like if you were born in the wrong area, like, you know, Southerners yeah. use words that we're just like, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. East Coasters, Midwestern, you know, we use words yep. that like a lot of English speakers in this world have no idea. English, like British English speakers. Well, to go on a tangent. Yeah, that's that's very <laughs> tangential, but I'm it's so true. Sorry. No, that's okay. So yeah. we'll just we'll just edit you out later. Perfect. <laughs> Actually, perfect. You edit me out all the time. I guess later, it's so. time to tell you this. Yeah, we've edited you completely out of every episode. Oh sorry. my god. <laughs> really? Yeah, pretty much. I'm not. I'm we not just, a part of this show. We just have you on You're... the show because you always bring beer. Oh <laughs> man. Yeah. Oh, I knew you guys were using me. Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry about that. But keep bringing the beer. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, so anyway, you guys have any more theories? I, UFOs, black I, holes. Uh, I don't. No, I don't I guess, either. No. The missing time. The one thing that sticks in my craw again that sticks in my craw about the whole thing is just these weird lapses where he's unaccounted for for several hours at a time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Twenty minutes, a half hour, where you don't know where somebody is as you're kind of plotting their day. Eh, it's no big deal. But when it becomes hours and he's in a relatively small area, mm -hmm. really, really makes me wonder what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's my oh. hardest part. Is it's like, well, what were you doing? He could have been doing anything. He could have he could have gone to a movie. He could have gone to a porno shop. I mean, he could have sat in his car and listened to the radio. Just gone for a drive. I go for, drive gone for a drive sometimes. Yeah. But I will say that you know, as a ufologist. <laughs> ufologist. <laughs> ufologist. No, I mean, you know. We're back I, to that phrase. We are a little bit. That, um, that, is, that is not in the lexicon. It is now. <sighs> You're welcome. I'm no, I mean, one of, that. The, one of the things that uh, people talk about with alien abductions is lost time at mm -hmm. time before time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, but that, that's nine times out of ten, that's somebody reporting like, I don't know. I was looking at the clock and then suddenly it was four hours later and I don't know where that time went. It's not that happens us to me saying, all the time. hey, a drunk person like was unaccounted for for a couple of hours and then he died. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's much harder to kind of figure out what's going on with this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I guess, you know, the only thing that would keep me from saying that it was something really malicious is that he was apparently cognizant enough to say there were four other people with me and no, yeah. they were not my friends. Mm -hmm. But if the, if it was something malicious, right, you kind of feel like he would have said, he was definitely in the state of mind to have said, uh, no, they were trying to kill me. 
you know, I was murdered. Prior to it, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, um, I you know, I, I really don't know. I mean, because, I mean, on the one hand, it's, it's so they strip him naked, push him out in front of a car, scrape him up off the pavement, put him back in the car, take it somewhere else, and then deliberately crash the car. It's I guess hard to it, deliberately hard crash to a car. And yeah, I guess the and, only thing would be is that then they would have, if they were trying to make it look like he crashed his car and that's how he died, yeah. they would have drug him into the driver's seat. Right, exactly. Yeah. Unless the truck showed up. I guess that's true. And they couldn't finish Unless, the, yeah, the white move. jacket guy or light jacket guy mm-hmm. was meant to drag him over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I... You know, it, it, it could be that, you know, like your, your theory that he went to a bar and met some guys, you know, and he was given a ride home and then mm-hmm. crashed, you know, and then, you know, and maybe they're, maybe they're a little angry with him. So they strip him naked and shove him out in front of a car, you know, and then grab him, put him back in the car. Well, that we are so far down the rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah this is I, like, uh, this is one of those ones where there's, it's just like a wide open rabbit you hole. Can, we yeah. can sit here and theorize we could just and conjecture theorize all night. And, yeah. and just keep going forever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I, I think. I, I really do feel like it's more likely that he, for for whatever reason, he was naked and st- definitely was drunk. You know, people are more likely to do things like get naked when they're drunk. I don't yeah. know why. Inhibitions uh, go away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, maybe he really did wreck the car, really was out trying to flag down a car, forgot that he was naked, and, and somebody just didn't see him and ran him over. Mm-hmm. And then somebody came along and helped put him in his car so he wouldn't freeze mm-hmm. and then left. Um, that You know, something like that. It's not necessarily a supernatural or... I guess totally my, creepy, I'm, thing. you know, to go on that, right, I'm going to say he, he drove his car into a ditch for whatever reason, stripped naked, was, you know, flagging down a car, got hit. This hitchhiker saw it happen, mm-hmm. goes running to help him, jacks his clothes because, you know, for whatever He's reason. He's unconscious. Because, you but, know, for, what, for whatever reason. I mean, like, people yeah. steal clothes all the time. If there's but just are you gonna steal, there. Are you going to steal bloody, torn up? Are you talking about jacked clothes that were already taken off of his body? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Naked? Yeah, because he was so hit when he was naked. Before, he stripped before. Okay. Yeah. He I was hit. thinking, like, He goes and he's like, well, there's take nice them all clothes. Off of him you know, bodily. he tries to help him. He's going to a different one. He sees the truck drivers pull up, and he's like, you know what? They'll take care of it. They're great mm-hmm. people. I'm going to go. You know, he's on the lam or whatever. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, that's possible. It's, it's, it is possible he jacked his clothes. Although, again, the information is sketchy. His clothes might have been in the back seat of the car. Yeah, and I mean, we just I, never I didn't hear about yeah, it. Yeah, it just wasn't reported. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So if anybody out there knows, uh, if you're the guy in the light-colored jacket, please contact us. You ostensibly totally still alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. It's not that long ago. Uh, if you're the person in the, if you're the hitchhiker, please give us a call. Uh, also, find us on Facebook and like us. <laughs> you can find us on iTunes. If you find us on iTunes, please give us a review. You can find us on Stitcher if you don't have time to download it to your iPod. You can or you forget. Stream us on the go, or if, you, or if you forget. If you want to send us an email, our email address is thinkingsidewayspodcast at gmail.com. And our website is thinkingsidewayspodcast.com. And you'll find our episodes out there also, so you don't need to go to pesky old iTunes if for some reason or another you're. <laughs> boycotting them or something well and we'll have yeah. the links on the website of course also that's uh, one of the benefits too is you'll have some cool we'll probably use the ones to. that are in english this no time. we'll do yeah. one in german just to see what people are running well, yeah you know yeah really? for our oh, german okay. listeners yeah, yeah. yeah. Do we, there we go do we have any email this? we do actually oh, we've got a lot of email <laughs> how, how did you decide which... do we have any email we want to read this well week? that's the whole thing yeah I mean, you can't read them all that's we we totally have an email that I wanted to read this week because okay. I actually got a big kick out of it. All okay. right, let's hear it. Uh, this is from Crary, I believe is how you pronounce the name. Uh, and it says, I just listened to your awesome Polybius podcast. Oh, no. And there was a description of how most emulated ROMs are for home consoles, mm-hmm. which I think is a common belief, but there's a huge arcade emulating community. Which... Uh, are we talking about, like, underground arcade communities? Because that must be the truth. I didn't know this. Oh, my goodness. Which is pretty rad. Uh, so uh, it gave us a couple of links here, which uh, let's uh, we'll post them. It's probably the easiest way yeah. to do it. Cause Maybe I, Facebook or something. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Uh, but they their MAME, M-A-M-E, is a program that emulates thousands of arcade games. And the ROMs are currently out there, but there's also the issue, and I'm paraphrasing here, but there's the legal issue mm. of well, yeah. taking somebody else's game and 
reusing it. But, oh my gosh! Uh, uh, but okay. uh, it's done a lot. Was just it was offering this to us because, of course, I think that we went off a little bit about asteroids. I know I did go off on ROMs for mm. a really long time. Yep. Yeah, I wouldn't mind downloading asteroids. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, evidently, that's where all the arcade games we want is at. Oh and, uh, my goodness. Perry also said, "Well, thanks for an awesome podcast, which is great." Oh, thanks, man. Uh, I then had to reply back about the fact that I have a job and a relationship and I eat regular meals and I have things that I have to be at on a regular basis. I don't have any of those. And if I start going to this website, I'm going to forego all of those. So will you make sure to forward those to me? Because I literally have none of those right now. So Uh, perfect. Well, no, you, you still have to show up here. Well, okay, so I have one commitment a week. And you got to do your research. Okay, so I have, like, one and a half commitments a week. And then yeah. we have to edit you out. Listen. Yeah. Well, that, that's <laughs> I'm not just saying, time, email though. this to me because I need this so bad. Uh, I need it, too, just for asteroids and a couple others. Uh, I can't keep going to ground control. Oh, well, uh, that's expensive, yeah. It yeah, gets it real get expensive. expensive. Yeah. Anybody know Ground Control is an arcade here in Portland? Portland. Actual arcade. An arcade. They have it's got a everything. bar arcade, though. Yeah. It's an over 21 arcade. You're welcome. Yeah. Maybe someday I'll host a little hmm, something mm-hmm. there. And they've got, uh, oh God, what was the tank game that came out right after Asteroids? It was. Uh, tank? No, it wasn't Tank. tank. It was. Uh, <laughs> I know the one we've talked about. Yeah, we talked about it in yeah, the previous it anyway, episode. But it was, it was, it was, that was really cool, too, yeah. for the time. I mean, obviously, yeah. it was pretty crude for, by today's standards. But no, that was, I really liked yeah. that email. That gave us... That was really good yeah. follow-up. Oh, yeah. And yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I, I can't go to this We're website. We're going to have some fun. <laughs> I want to go to this yeah. website send it so to me. badly. Please send it to and me. Jones and I can't mm. do it. Uh, what, what else? Are, uh, I'm sorry. I was thinking about games. What yeah. are we doing? Nothing. Emails? That's it. Nope, that's, that's it. That was we, it. That's we all we have. So, that's all we uh, care we're pretty about. Much, uh, we're pretty much done here. We can wrap it up. Any last thoughts?